Hey there, GC Pa. Appreciate those good luck wishes. Speaking of, why don't we actually get started here? On a run with the Watcher on Ascension 20. Looking to... Looking to go for 11 consecutive victories. That guy says, would I be interested in even harder ascensions, like multiple bosses at the end of more acts? There have been a couple of mods that have, have tried to further increase the difficulty with ascension-like challenges. I've kind of got mixed feelings on these. For a very, very long time, I held that Ascension 16, 16 through 20 was already making Spire too difficult to be properly interesting. And now, a couple thousand hours of play later, I have feel like I've gotten sufficiently comfortable with Ascension 20 that it's reasonable, but I truly think that adding more difficulty beyond this point would, would make the game probably worse and not better. That said, uh, if you wanted to, to combine additional challenge modes with, say, custom mode modifiers, there you'd have a much more reason to want ascensions like up to 30 or something. I personally would be able to, I would love to be able to see some kind of like super challenging um, encounter or mode in Slay the Spire where you have to fight two bosses at the same time or um, an extra boss after Act 1 just to see how murderously difficult it would be and what it would take to surpass. The Fable Transform 2 Watcher Star, for max health no less. I, I, I'm I, having a hard time thinking that any of the options are even close to as good, on average, as transforming two defends here. Now, it's possible that we could actually get really, really, really punished by a Transform 2. If we get the two signature moves, for example, that we never draw separately, or... Uh, I don't know. Double... Master reality. We could be in a, a really tough spot. But it's far more likely that the Transform 2 will simply function as a remove 2 while also getting our deck um, started much, much earlier. Taking a free upgrade on, say, Eruption, also pretty valuable, but it's not going to be nearly as valuable as something like a Transform 2. Pathwise, this would be a good act to get the Burning Elite. I also quite like this path. Up the far left here, getting four rest sites. But either way, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the transform two here. Transform two defends into a devotion and a talk to the hand. Well, that's certainly a head start on a deck. Of all the cards we could have gotten, these are definitely ones I would describe as going to be good. Getting a talk to the hand instead of a defend is absolutely good. We've got offense heavy here. The devotion to mantra per turn, currently kind of mediocre. However, add any additional mantra source to this deck, and we can talk about something different entirely. So, is that good enough to go for elite before upgrade? I don't necessarily think so. Would I opt to remove an additional card at this time? Would I even remove another defend? We're fighting Guardian, right? Yeah, okay, I shouldn't remove all my defends. That'd be a bad idea. But I could still consider going to the shop here and removing a card. I'm just not sure that I actually want to. Actually, if I might go for this shop. We'll see. So here's my current intended path. Take three guaranteed combats, couple events, upgrade... Could opt for more combats? Not really. Yeah, three guaranteed combats. Upgrade Eruption, fight our first elite. That should be pretty doable. Even if we don't necessarily get any better cards from here. It's the fact, simple fact that we're down two defends is going to make us much better at the elite fight. And then from there we can decide if we're in position for another elite fight or not. I think going left here to this first elite could be real trouble for us. We should not do that. And either way, we're only getting two elites. I guess there is one path that hits three, but it's kind of crazy. And then we either proceed to this shop via that elite, or we fight the burning elite, or we could even thread the middle here. That good old optionality if we end up too weak to fight an elite. But I think that's relatively unlikely here. 
brilliance incoming? I'd love to see it. Yeah, I'd love to see an early brilliance. Our first foe, the jaw worm, deadly as always. May we never take 49 to this nerd again. Alright, I think we're definitely going to be playing Vigilance. I think it's usually correct to use your Miracle at first opportunity just to deal six additional damage, at least in this fight. And here we can go. Eruption, then talk to the hand. And we should have a kill next turn. Especially if I play the Devotion. There's only three block cards in the deck, so I'm guaranteed to draw two attacks next turn. And even our worst two attacks will kill. When in Wrath here. Okay, we get a potion. Not the best potion in the world, but we get a potion from our first fight. And we get a pretty temptingly good set of card rewards here. I like Sash Whip, particularly in combination with Talk to the Hand. Just applying the simple debuff of weakness helps you block so much better. It's also pretty decent damage at the same time. Wouldn't mind an empty mind either for the draw and stance, stance exit, but I think at this moment we probably want the better damage card as well, and that is Ash Whip. Hey there, Toaster King. We started this run with a double defend transform, getting devotion and talk to the hand. The devotion I'm not sure about, the talk to the hand is excellent though. Hi there, Pika. I do indeed plan to play more Downfall. We do modded slash community runs about once a month whenever the sub bar below my face fills up, which is pretty soon we're due. Hmm. I'll take a Zash Whip. I'll take a Zash Whip. OWM, what do you call a bird faced man with a Twitter handle? A cult follower. Cult following? Wait, I did that slightly wrong. Well, that's why they're called dad jokes. They're delivered by dad. Hey, early wheel kick. I could also actually get behind a Flying Sleeves with a uh, uh, Talk to the Hand in the deck already. But I think we just want the, the bonk and the draw of the Wheel Kick. Really do like early Wheel Kicks. For walloping the Elites of Act 1 especially. This probably lets us take Red Path. I'm Dunny with the Funny. It's a really good card. That's right. What about these three attacks? I don't want to necessarily add too many attacks to this deck, but I think with the wheel kick added to the deck, a consecrate looks really good. A zero cost card to draw into that does some area damage to help us with, say, the three sentries. If we wanted more broadly powerful area damage, we could pick up Conclude here. Conclude is less useful alongside Talk to the Hand. You can't leave Wrath after playing it as it commits to ending your turn. And if we're fighting Slime Boss, I might be tempted by Conclude, but I've really come to like Consecrate, as long as you can afford to upgrade it. And we do have a few upgrades we want here. Eruption, Wheel Kick, Talk to the Hand, and Consecrate already. So we'll probably want to stop adding cards pretty soon or find ways to get more cards upgraded. I'll happily trade away some max health. I know we already lost a little bit of max health, but I'll trade some more here to gain the golden idol, giving us 25% more gold for the rest of the run. Does put us down to 56 max health, which is a little bit iffy, but I'm already relatively confident in our late game. This is gonna give us more money to spend as we keep going. Simply find an apotheosis. Easy. Lastly, it is time to spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Get a curse. 
Nay, get a relic. That relic is... A singing bowl. There we go. All of our max health shall be restored. Who needs a mango when you can get the, the only... Actually, not the only. One of two max health relics that can give you above 30 max health in a single run. Actually, one of three. Jeez, there's a lot of relics that can give you a ton of max health. The others being Cleric Face and Darkstone Periapt. There might even be a third one if I'm not... I don't think there's any other max health per X cards. I think our first upgrade should be the Eruption, almost assuredly. Imagine getting 30 health from Darkstone. I, we've done it before. I think I think my record for health off the Darkstone is 30 or 36. But man, is it once in a blue moon that that happens, let me tell you. Well, this is certainly a good fight for Power Potion, if I feel so inclined. I do feel so inclined. Let's use it. Double Devotion. Yeah. So, four mantra next turn. Okay. I believe that means we want to wake this thing up now. Since I'm drawing these cards next turn. Next turn we play Sash Whip, Defend Vigilance with Miracle. We take two, and then we're in Divinity on the following turn. Actually, we take zero. Even better. I just have to make sure I end this turn with an attack. And don't use the Miracle here. So here we Sash Whip. Shame about the Wheel Kick. Actually, do I even need to be in Calm? I mean, I need to be n not in Wrath. That's what I need to be. I'm not going to need the energy next turn. Really wish I'd drawn Wheel Kick next turn, but that's how it is. And now, Divinity. But alas, it is not lethal. Unless I use the Explosive Potion, in which case, it absolutely will kill. But I'll be down... A somewhat important resource. The other option is take nine. Keep the explosive potion. I think I'd rather take the nine. This explosive potion is very useful against three sentries or against a gremlin knob. And if I'm only taking nine, it's really not that bad. Pretty happy with this outcome overall. Alright, we get 27 gold and a ceramic fish. Very early ceramic fish. For every card we do add, gain 9 gold. Interesting. That does make me want this carve reality, because it's even more upfront damage. Two cards in one, and we'll get 9 gold for adding it. Starting to gain max health is also very much an option here. I think I like Carve Reality more than I like Flying Sleeves, just because it's more overall damage efficient. Although against Flying Sleeves actually does work better with Talk to the Hand, hilariously. I'll grab the Carve. We'll upgrade our... Next opponent is either the Sentries or the Gremlin Knob. We're going to upgrade the Consecrate first. So that our area damage is improved. And what do we got here? Oh, yeah, Tamaru. At the start of our turn, gain one mantra. So that'll be four per turn once we upgrade Devotion. If we can find any other mantra generating card, we're going to be online with Divinity Build here. And boy, am I glad I upgraded the Consecrate. This could be a time for the Explosive Potion, but I think we can also just... Uh, take two here, and then win next turn, more or less? Yeah. Play the Damaru! Yep. 
You got a kid. Yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. Wheel kick kills one. Smite would kill one. Oh, Sashwood kills one as well. Go wheel kick first. And then I only, unfortunately only have two energies, so we'll have to have to take four here if I don't want to use the potion, which is fine. Kill you. Miracle. Kill you. Get 18 bucks and probably Tantrum. Although we're starting to be worried about our matchup against the Guardian here. Like, sure, we'll have Talk to the Hand, but that alone won't be enough to protect us during the Guardian's defensive mode turns. I think we're going to need to, at a minimum, remove a strike here. Yeah, if I'm fighting Guardian, Empty Body Wood does look pretty good. It'd be really nice to have a way to get out of Wrath. With only one Vigilance and now a whole bunch of attacks added, getting stuck in Wrath is going to be a real problem. Dang, that tantrum, though. I think that means we're going to the shop. We're not going to take on the Burning Elite. Instead, we're going to remove a card. Uh, remove one of our strikes at the store so that we can have a better matchup for the boss. I'm sure I'll end up liking Empty Body later on, too. And we'll keep taking card rewards, which will, again, at minimum... Give us two hit points apiece. With vigilance, then eruption. Talk to the hand, empty body. Actually, maybe I needed to be in wrath at the end there. Nope. Okay. Second Talk to the Hand fixes basically all the problems by giving us an overabundance of block per attack we play. That means I could have taken the Tantrum too, but that's fine. We'll definitely take this uh, Talk to the Hand here. Flurry of Blow is also reasonable, actually, all things considered. But I want double Talk to the Hand. I agree, this is a very good upgrade potion. Not sure if we'll need it for this lad or not. Let's see. Even if I upgrade the Devotion, we won't be Divine on turn 3, so we shouldn't place any care about this Devotion one way or the other. I think this is just a fine opening. Like so. Wheel Kick guarantees we get Eruption by next turn. It might cause us to get Eruption this turn. Which would be potentially problematic. But ultimately I need to play it, so that we know exactly what we're drawing next turn. Doesn't Damaru help us with that? that? That was even accounting for Damaru. With upgraded... Um, with upgraded Devotion and the Damaru, on the turn we need to kill Gremlinob, we end up with 9 Mantra. It's not quite enough. So we have to play this wheel kick, because otherwise there's no way to guarantee that the eruption appears. Fortunately, we don't draw it. We just have eruption strike strike, which is a little sad. How do we want to proceed from here? We could go s miracle, carve, and sash whip. Let's see, next turn we'll only have three energy. So with eruption strike strike, we do nine plus 24, 33 damage. That's not gonna be enough. We need to have a smite in hand. What if we just carve reality? Don't play the sash whip or anything fancy. So I guess the question is, do we... 
Sash Whip Miracle carve reality, or do we simply carve reality? We don't need to upgrade anything next turn. If we just carve reality, we bring Knob to 51. Next turn, we Miracle Eruption, Strike, Strike, Smite. That's um, 48 plus 9, 57 damage. So that, that definitely kills. So the, the simple question before me is, do we save more health with Sash Whip Miracle Carve, or just Carve? If we simply Carve, we block for two, we take four. If we Sash Whip Miracle Carve, we go to six block, the Grumlin Knob gains three strength and becomes weakened. So 11 times 0.75 is, it'll still be doing eight, but we'll block for two more. So that's the line. Let me just verify that we have enough damage, right? We do 14 this turn. Plus 9. Plus 12. Plus 24. 59. Yes, that's enough damage. So we go Sash Whip. Miracle Card. Take 2. Then on this turn, Eruption. Strike. Smite keep our potions. Eternal Feather's nice, healing us when we visit rest sites based on the number of cards in the deck. We could do double devotion to get even more mantra per turn. With two upgraded devotions and tomorrow, we'll be divine almost every turn. Interesting with double talk to the hand. We're kind of deep into upgrade debt. Uh, double devotion will be very good for the guardian fight, actually, which is quite nice. Oji says, wasn't talk to the hand miracle carve better? We would have gotten two block from playing the talk, four block from playing the car, but the gremlin knob wouldn't have been weak, so we would have had. 8 block, take in 11 damage. So we would have taken 3 instead of taking 2 with that line. Slightly worse. I am going to go with this Devotion. I don't know if it's actually good. What I will do is discard the Explosive Potion. Keep the Swift Potion and the Blessing of the Forge. That should help us get through the Guardian fight, no problem. Alright, if we wanted that Tantrum, we can have it back here. Now with two Talk to the Hands, it's more tempting, although with the Divinity Engine, it's less tempting. Interesting. There's also Waffle here, which could increase our max health substantially, as well as giving us a lot more health right now. It's not a bad idea, actually, just for the sheer hit point advantage it gives us going into what could be a, a bit of a tricky boss fight. Could also buy Master of Strategy here for an upfront draw three, and I don't we have enough money for Master Strategy and a card removal. Who needs scissors when you can have this? Although it is a lot more expensive. I really like its just upfront brute force card draw approach. Question card is max health. No. No, it's not. No. <laughs> I like I like that line of thinking. Um, but very much the opposite. Question card is more likely to cause us to take the things that were given from card rewards. Which means we're less likely to gain max health via the singing bowl. But more likely to gain money via ceramic fish. So question card is money here. And minus max health. But it costs 278. I don't think I'll be taking that when I could do something like Master Strategy card removal. Maple Manatee joining the eternal list of channel cuties. Thank you for spending so much time in the stream as to acu accumulate the required half mil of channel points. Okay, you added the list right now. I do think Cutthroat Fate's pretty good with the uh, double talk to the hand, though. Definitely gonna remove a strike going into Guardian here. And I'm, I'm sure we're gonna like this card. Master Strategy's Brute Force card draw is gonna be so dang broadly useful. My only hope is that we can find a way Brilliant 
hit them each one time. Why not? Evenly distribute the block gaining. Why? Because I can. Wouldn't you? Worship. Hmm. Normally not a card I consider that heavily, but man, is it rather powerful here. For its ability to put us into divinity doesn't do anything else, though, which I'm not as thrilled about. Protect could help us with the boss, but I think we're, we're settled against the boss. I'm not too worried here about the Guardian. I'll be upgrading, I, I guess, one of our two Talk to the Hands before that fight. I feel like Worship has to be good. I feel like it'd be good with an upgrade or retain. I think two Max Health has to be good. I'd much rather have a Prostrate, maybe even a Prey. Yeah, more upgrade debt? No, thank you. Not today. Let's take our heal. There should be a 9 hit point heal here as we go into the boss. We'll upgrade, I guess, Talk to the Hand. With both Devotions and Amaru, we'll have 5 Mantra per turn. Which is just about perfect. Let's make sure our block from playing attack exceeds the damage we take during the curl up turns. Scared of Act 2, are we? Well, we're going to get a whole boss relic. Plus maybe a Vault or Omniscience or... Something similar. Okay, hopefully we're drawing Carve Reality next turn. We've got Swift Potion to hopefully prevent the attack here. I'm not going to use the Miracle now. Although well, Miracle Sash with is a little nice. Alright, we got the carve. Perfect. Enough damage to transform. And we can also use the Miracle to get our first Devotion down. We'll do that. Brilliance would also be quite good as, uh, as far as attacks go. Yeah, I think Brilliance would be very helpful. Very helpful indeed. Alright, we are Divine next turn. Divinity gives us triple damage for the turn, as well as an additional three energy. Get him. The power. GG, Nerdian. Got him. So quite a few rare cards that I'd be very happy with. Um, we'd like Lesson Learned, Vault, Omniscience, Scrawl, or Brilliance. Any of those five. And since we're looking at three, we're pretty likely to see one of them. There's Scrawl. That's more card draw. Draw cards until our hand is completely full to help us get those devotions and talk to the hands in play. Or to help us get to whatever stance we're looking for. Pretty hard to turn that down. Less interested in instant divinity via blasphemy when the stack already has so much access to divinity. Don't think we have enough cards in hand usually to make spirit shield all that good. And what we'd like is some accelerant for this deck. So let's take a scroll pretty happily here. And what do we get for a boss relic? Hmm. An intriguing set of three. So, choice one. Violet Lotus gives us additional energy upon exiting Calm Stance. Currently with just one Vigilance, the Lotus isn't exactly amazing, but it's definitely not bad. Ectoplasm gives us a fourth energy every turn, but prevents us from gaining any more money. 
That's a bit of a problem. One, we have Golden Idol giving us 25% additional money from enemy drops. Two, we have Ceramic Fish giving us nine gold per card we add. Both of these are gold bonuses, and both of them will be deactivated upon picking up Ectoplasm here. So I'm pretty disinclined to take that. Last option, the bell, giving us a unique, unremovable curse and three relics. One common, one uncommon, one rare. That curse is the curse of the bell. An unremovable, unplayable curse. Bell could definitely be good for us. It really all depends on what relics we get, but the unremovable curse is a bit of a downer. Otherwise, we could consider the Violet Lotus, which could become much better with a, a few added cards, like one or two, tran a Tranquility, a Meditate, an Inner Peace, a Fear No Evil, anything like that added to this deck would be a huge gain of energy for us. That said, we don't necessarily need more energy because of the Divinity Engine we have. For that reason, I'm leaning towards the Calling Bell. The one extra curse is kind of nice. There's a slight upside to it. One, we'll get more, we'll get nine gold from the ceramic fish. Two, we'll get a little bit more healing from the eternal feather upon visiting rest sites, but it's more about just getting more relics right now. What do you got for me, Culling Bell? Dong! The bell tolls for thee. I'm pretty happy with these. Anchor! The boat thingy, part one. Giving us ten block on turn one. Matroshka makes our next two chests contain two relics apiece. And this is just in time for us to get uh, two of them. And lastly, the bird-faced urn, healing us two hit points upon a power play. And we have two powers in the deck already, so four health per combat is the bird-faced urn. All those things combined to be pretty dang good, if I do say so myself. Secretly, four relics. So, max of two elites looks like, once again. Glad we've been able to get our relics in other ways. I'm thinking visiting shops and getting some card removals are essential. I'm going to continue to aggressively remove strikes and defends, both. Probably defends are better are worse than strikes at the moment. Although we have Bronze Automaton coming up, which means we need to figure out a way to deal with the artifact of Bronze Automaton. We can't just rely on Talk to the Hand for block in that fight. How strong would it be if you swapped into a boss swapped into a calling bell that gave you all three boat thingies? I think that'd be an exceedingly good start. You wouldn't you wouldn't really wouldn't take any damage from any fight in Act 1. Because of the free block. Like every hallway fight in Act 1 would be completely free. That'd be pretty good. So I'm thinking we go to an early shop to A, look at the relic options, and B, just keep removing cards. That'll help counteract this curse of the bell as well. And then because we have such money bonuses, we should be able to maybe get another card removal here. We do something like the following. Maybe go combat instead of the event here. Let's figure out what we want by then. It's partially going to be dependent on how much money I spend at the first shop, though. First up, the Chosen One. Could be attacked for 24 next turn. If we don't draw empty body. I think it's still worth it to end in wrath here. So on turn three will be divine. But we do get attacked. Interesting. Talk talk sash whip consecrate. Gives me three, five, five. Three, five, five block. Take a bit here. Could we just kill outright with the carve reality? We can do 12 plus 24 plus 16 plus 16. So we could do 32 plus 36. Is that our best? Yes. Without using the forge potion. 
32 plus 36 is equal to 68. We're not quite there, kill-wise. We have access to very good healing, so I don't mind taking a few to win this fight. So you, you'll do 18, we'll block 13, take 5 here. That's not too bad. Or I could use a potion. But that doesn't necessarily feel helpful here. I'd rather have the potions. Prostrate. Zero cost, gain mantra, gain block. That one we'll add. That is an important piece of the puzzle here. Okay, they have similar health, so I'm going to strike the back one. This might be a fight for a potion use. These two look like they're going to be tough for us. Oh my, okay, this actually is... Well, I mean, we're taking 22 here, right? Unless I use a potion. That's going to have to be a swift potion, then. It's either I enter Wrath, kill one, take 22, or I don't enter Wrath, kill none, still take 22. I'd like to not take 22, please. Did that necessarily help me? I'm not sure. So 9 plus 16, 25. 12, 12. All right, we can take a little bit less here. Using the Forge Potion, I don't think makes a substantial difference here, and it's a very powerful potion that I'd like to have for that first Elite anyway. So, we'll settle for this, even though it wasn't a particularly good outcome. Ouch. Do get a potion mech, and... We do find an inner piece if we want uh, another way to change stances. Not sure that we actually want that as much as we want the max health right now. If we had taken the um, Violent Lotus, this would have been better. But the inner piece, not so much. Now. Do I have to pay for substatus of Baylorbot? Good question. I don't. You're able as a Twitch partner to... Um, request a lifetime free subscription for your channel bot. So it's got a, uh, a Baylor bot as a permanent tier three sub without anyone pay paying for that. Pretty nice. Double store. The reshopping. Oh my. Is that a bag of preparation? It sure is. A very, very tempting one at that. I guess we can go here now, get a bonus combat that way. Um, there's also a centennial puzzle. Note that bag of prep says draw two, but puzzle says draw three, and that could be even better. Although I like the unconditional draw of the bag of preparation. Note, also eight gold cheaper. Take that. What are my thoughts on the Foresight with this deck? I think that Scry is very useful for getting us key cards on the right turn, and I think that the fact that it heals too makes it even better. I think Foresight is a great addition to the deck. However, I don't know that it's worth paying for. Wouldn't consider the Medical Kit over one of the two card draw relics here. Getting rid of status cards can be nice, but it's really the first time you draw the status cards that are the real problem. And the medical kit doesn't help you with that. 
but no one's ever mentioned a major puzzle alert. Yet, maybe they should be. Trip for zero cost vulnerable would be a nice debuff card. Potentially. It's got some utility to it. Is Chrysalis or Metamorphosis ever purchasable in a shop? I think the attack version Metamorphosis can be quite good for the Defect and for the Ironclad. Heck, you could even make it work on Silent under some circumstances. Random card generation is, is really quite nice, although on Watcher I tend not to trust it, because there are some Watcher cards you really don't want to be randomly generating or putting into your hand. Like Signature Move or Conclude. I particularly like it on Defect because it can synergize with All for One or with Scrape. So if you've got either of those cards, uh, Chrysalis and Metamorphosis can be quite good. You'll rarely see me buy it though. I'm gonna go gonna go with the old reliable bag of preparation over the Centennial Puzzle. But I think both are pretty dang good here, and we'll uh, we'll save up to remove a card here probably. So let's take another fight. It's a Snake Plant, and boy am I glad I took those bonus two draws. Let me tell you. Looks hard to take less than 18 here. We can weaken with Sash Whip, take 6 times 3. That's not too bad. And we are healing for a bunch. Um, we're healing for 12 with the Eternal Feather right here. So I'm not exactly immediately worried. I would prefer not to use the Forge Potion here. Oh, actually, and we have Prostrate for Block 4, so we take even less than that. I'm allowed to Wheel Kick as well to try to draw better. But it would have to be Wheel Kick, Sash Whip, Prostrate. And then I could Miracle... I could Miracle in Talk to the Hand or Defend. That would be more health saved. And Consecrate. Perfect. So Miracle... Talk Plus, Sash Whip, Consecrate, Prostrate. Take only 6 here. Uh, 8 here. And heal 12 at the fire. This turn is a turn off. We also want to make sure to play the prostrate for the remaining, uh, the, sorry, the devotion for the remaining two hit points. Sense of Steel is definitely worse than these potions. We could take another prostrate. And I do kind of like the idea of that, but we're so deep in upgrade debt, I really don't think we should be taking anything other than hit points right now. I also don't want to flood the, the deck full of cards, especially unupgraded cards. We need to be able to draw consistently a good set of cards in the next few fights to get through our upcoming elite battles here. So I'm just going to take two more max health. Keep these current potions. I like that the power potion heals us for two. Um... Look at this event, which is Relic for a Writhe Curse. You know, with the bag of preparation, I could maybe make an argument for actually taking this. We'd want to remove it here, but I don't think so. Don't think so. Now, if I knew this was a Dubu doll, I'd click this instantly. But I don't. And nine gold, it's true. We'd have the perfect amount of gold. And yet... I shan't. But maybe if it if I was at 19 cards or 24 cards, maybe it'd be more th worth considering for the immediate 3 hit point heal. 
so things that are really good right now. Scrawl to be a free card is pretty important. Upgrading the base damage on Wheel Kick could be important. Upgrading one of these Devotions could be important. I think the Scrawl upgrade is the better short-term one, though. We need every turn to matter as much as possible. And with so little base energy, getting one more energy on the Scrawl turn is pretty crucial. Also matters if we get a duplication offer of some kind. With two good potions, I think we should go straight to the event here. I'll even... I'm gonna need that money later, actually. I'll take a punch to the face, lady. Now. Alright, it's a perfectly cromulent first turn. We get talk to the hand plus down, we get devotion down. Do I power potion in this fight? I think that I shall. Let's take a foresight here. That should be all the help I need here. Beautiful. Scrawl plus is here. So let's Miracle and then Scrawl. Perfect. So what is this? Vigilance, Eruption, Talk to the Hand, something Empty Body? Top two cards are Devotion. We want to make sure we play that Devotion this turn, otherwise I don't enter Divinity next turn. So it's going to be Talk to the Hand. No Sash Whip, just Master Strategy, Consecrate, Devotion, Empty Body. That also means not having the Carve Reality. Ooh. Maybe I don't want to do that. Attack for 24 damage next turn. It's going to be a sad Divinity turn. Hmm. Maybe we do Consecrate... Carve Reality, Empty Body this turn. Do Divinity two turns from now. Don't play the Devotion. Because this hand will be what I draw. I Sash Whip you. This goes down to 10 by 3, right? I can almost stay in Wrath here. Comfortably. What next turn, though? What next turn? So I'll draw exactly all of that. That sounds great. I have Divinity now if I want it via Prostrate. Do I want this? I could go Strike, Strike, Smite, Eruption, Vigilance. Six energy. That seems pretty good, actually. Discard the devotion. As much as I'd like to play it for two hit points, I just need to make sure I kill the book of stepping this turn, or else. Okay, that went pretty well. We saved our most valuable potion. We get a relic, the Ink Bottle, which is a card draw for every 10 cards we play. Here's where the... Um, what's it called? Violent Lotus whip in. Finally catching up to being good with this Tranquility. I think this would be a reasonable flurry of blows to take. We switch dances enough. And with an Ink Bottle, I like it more as well. With two talk of the hands, flurry is equivalent to block. I agree with that as well. I'll pick that one up. Pick our relic here, which is the boot. Whenever we would deal four less unblocked attack damage, up it to five. That's nice. What we don't need is regal pillow for extra healing at rest sites. The eternal feather has that by and large covered. 
Since we're down a potion, I think we should take another combat before our elite fight here. One fewer event, although yes, there's a chance of the Colosseum event appearing, more likely if we take more events here. And this potion should be good enough to get through the elite. Actually, you know what? Let's do two events. First up, a snack. A stinky, slithery snack. Snack will confuse us, causing all our cards to be random cost. This may or may not be a good thing. Looks like so far it's good. But only so far. Let's leave Vigilance for the end of the turn, hey? Let's go Eruption, Miracle, Scrawl. Oof. How about that? All the other cards are three costs, though. We can do Carve, Reality, Devotion, Vigilance. It'll have to do. Also draw a card. Even worse. Eruption leaves me with two energy, that's fine. Thank goodness the three cost flurry of blows came back. Or I don't know what I would do. Alright, everything has gone well. Thank goodness. $25. More unupgraded cards. There's a chance to see upgraded cards randomly in Act 2, but it just has not happened to us this run. That's okay. Pretty happy to use the Singing Bowl, which is now up to 8 max health. We've almost gotten back to our starting value that we subtracted from twice in Act 1. So it doesn't really feel like we've had a max hit point penalty. And our second event is a treasure chest, which will contain not one, but two relics. Two bad relics. The Smiling Mask, making sure card removals always cost 50 gold at the shop. That's actually pretty good for us. And a Bottled Flame, which is pretty decent too. We can Bottled Talk to the Hand Plus, so that we can always apply that debuff on turn one. Only problem is, Bronze Automaton coming up. With artifact layers, but we'll have, we'll have some time to solve that, I suppose. But yeah, I think bottling Talk to the Hand Plus is quite wise. Could also consider bottling the Eruption. Guaranteed turn one Wrath. For better immediate damage. Hmm. Hmm. Puddle Flurry of Blows. That's a fun option. See, the more I think about it, the more bottling eruption seems quite appropriate with our extra draw on turn one and free block on turn one. We know that Bronze Automaton is not attacking me on turn one, which makes it a comparatively safe thing to do. I'm going to pick the eruption plus here as our bottle for the short term. I guess the heart we'd want to talk to the hand bottled more than anything. But since we have two copies, I'm not as worried about that either. It's more this fight right here, where I'd like to be able to deal double damage with Consecrate on turn one. Is this our upgrade potion? Currently I have four energy, so I can Eruption, Consecrate, Strike, Vigilance. That deals 9 plus 28. That won't be enough to kill. So yes, if I want to kill the Red Slaver, we need to Forge Potion here to get the extra energy out of the Miracle and to upgrade the Strikes deal. This is what this was for. I guess I could have played the eruption somewhere else. That's fine, though. Get him, boot.
positively get him. But now right kill this one. Let's shuffle before those wounds get added. Oh yeah, here we go. Guaranteed divine next turns. Let's keep these. Take three, then heal. Think bottle on nine, no less. We get Vajra, one point of strength, will help us in damage dealing. We're finally offered an upgraded card. It's a pressure points plus. Hilariously enough, this could allow us to remove artifact straight layers from the bronze automaton to help with the talk to the hands, but I don't think that's our solution. Could take Deva Form for energy gain or study for card draw. Both are also a bit unusual here. Deva Form is good if you have consistent card draw. We have one time front loaded card draw, which the Deva Form is not good with, unfortunately. Rilgon, thanks for seven months of support. Yeah, I, I for one am not convinced that Deva Form is what we need. We already, again, have an energy engine in the Devotions. I keep taking max health. Okay, we're up to full health. I think for the Bronze Automaton fight, we're going to need the Devotions upgraded. Or maybe the base damage of our cards, since these are going to be multiplied. Maybe we need to upgrade Wheel Kick. Start with one Devotion. And we have the Smiling Mask, so now I definitely want to take a shop. Or a nice cheap card remove. Frozen Eye is here, letting us see the draw pile in order. There's also a stance potion and a distilled chaos. Buying a potion for this upcoming Bronze Automaton fight seems somewhat wise, as well as removing another basic card. Remove one defend? Yes, yeah, so I'll remove one defend here. <laughs> and I think I'll buy the distilled chaos, just so we have a little something. Blind is an option too, actually. Blind would help with the automaton specifically, letting us strip through artifact layers. And once that's done, remove damage with weakness. It's a zero cost card, goes nicely with our ink bottle. We don't have a wave of the hand yet. Hmm. Ah. Can I buy blind and block potion? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. Consider upgrading Sash Whip here. We could consider upgrading Prostrate here. We could consider upgrading Devotion or Wheel Kick here as well. Wheel Kick for the uh, damage racing. If we want to kill the boss as quickly as possible, upgrading Wheel Kick's probably it. Or we might just want to upgrade Devotion. Say we want to go Divine as frequently as possible. Although I'm not sure the one mantra per turn will matter. Going from 6 to 7 doesn't seem hugely impactful. We're Divine... Every other turn. Some turns will be divine twice in a row. I guess that's got to be broadly useful. All right, let's get this other one upgraded now. Does Mantra overflow? Yes. All right, I'm willing to gamble that we're going to draw exit momentarily. Yeah, it's Vigilance right now. That I gotta play. So we'll just go Miracle, Consecrate, Sash Whip, Vigilance, strip one artifact layer, leave these, talk to the hands for later. And our main goal is just to get the Devotions in play. Could play both of these, remove all the artifact layers, get them out of the deck, but then I'm in Wrath, and that's not gonna go well for me.
So the orbs are stealing my rarest cards in the draw pile, which is probably one or even both devotions. We'll target the one with the lowest health. First here. Ouch. Looks like I'll just have to take 16. We could use the block potion here, but I have basically full health anyway. So I think we'll be fine. Took my scrawl. It's possibly for the best. All right, here we go. Let's get stuff in play, shall we? I could kill this one, but I won't be able to play the Devotion afterwards. Unless I draw the Flurry of Blows, not even then. I think we should use this Talk to the Hand now. It's a shame we don't get the artifact removed before playing the upgraded one, but it should still be fine. We go Talk to the Hand, Defend, Strike, keep the Smite for a Divinity turn. It's weak, but it'll do. If we talk to the hand in blind now, the boss will be weak for the hyper beam turn. That's going to help a lot. I'm already divine next turn. But if I can get devotion in play this turn, I will also be divine next turn. Unfortunately, doing so would require not... Uh, I could also be the divine the turn following the divinity turn. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure that's even useful, but I can get Scrawl back. That's got to be useful. Although it's just going to be easier to play next turn, huh? Okay, so we go Talk to the Hand, Sash Whip, Blind Carve. This turn. Next turn, we'll use the Triple Damage Consecrate to get the other Devotion in play. We do take an uncomfortable amount of damage here, but I think we're about to solve our problems. And there's Scroll Plus. So if I can draw into Prostrate, I'll enter Divinity again next turn. Do I play Eruption now? Yes. Then Flurry, then Scrawl. Then Blind. Prostrate. Vigilance. It's unfortunate about the Wheel Kick. That's okay. Next turn, we enter Divinity again. And the Bronze Automaton is weakened. We're fine now. I mean, it still hurts a lot, but we live. That's the important bit. We get to keep the Block Potion, too. Myself, fair enough. I was thinking I can up ink bottle a bunch if I play my cards in the wrong order on purpose. I got six energy here. This should be fine. GG. There's our lesson learned. We're behind on upgrades. Lesson learned would let us get ahead on upgrades by upgrading up to one random card each combat when we kill a foe with it. That would let us take something like a fusion amber pretty happily too. This deck would benefit very much so from a few more upgrades. Upgrade the base numeric value of our attacks, 
upgrade the card draw of Master of Strategy, upgrade the block on our blocks. This would definitely be good. The other option, the Establishment or Master Reality, neither seem to offer us a whole lot. We don't have really have any retain other than the Smite here. Uh, and likewise, we're not generating any cards other than the Smite. So I don't think the other options are all that good. Oh ho, and we get offered an amazing set of three boss relics. All non-energy options, which means we're on three base energy for the rest of this run. But that's what Divinity is for, to generate energy for us. Option A, remove two cards entirely from the deck. I'd remove the last defend and a strike. Shrink the deck down further. That'd be nice. Option B, transform and upgrade three cards. This would notably give us 27 gold with Ceramic Fish, so I think Astrolabe has to be better than Empty Cage. Transform, strike, strike, defend. It's also less things for the lesson learned to have to target. Or option C, with Runic Pyramid, no longer discard our hand ever giving us control over when and where we play our stance change cards, our block cards, our status cards, all of it. I really like Pyramid, especially with the Bag of Preparation. Early card draw especially helps this thing. Yes, I'm Brandon. Thanks for 23 months of support. The Bram, thanks for two months. Get dunked on at Dumbaton. And about five minutes ago, Eins Vai Dry, thanks for the $5 donation. Eins Vai Dry says, My girlfriend and I love to sit on the couch after a long day and watch you play, learn about Spire, and discuss the game and my plays. Thanks for the good tips and the good time. And Luthi Lil says, Isn't Pyramid annoying with three energy? Normally, yes. Here, again, we're not actually a three energy deck. That's the power of divinity. We're going to be able to get... It's more like six, three energy one turn, six energy the next. And what Pyramid does that is exceptional here is allow us to save up our cards for those six energy turns. And I like that quite a lot. You know, we may not actually want to go to rest sites. It's really going to depend on how much healing I feel like I need. Would I take 999 gold? Maybe. Big maybe. We'll see if we get offered it. I guess I'll go this way first. Hmm. I'll just take one here. Got lesson learned. That's right. Normally, I I forget that card. Today, hopefully, less so. Don't want to do too much damage, though. You know. There you are. Line first for Ink Bottle, then upgrade the Car of Reality. Oh, with Divinity Deck, one of the best ways to block is to have yourself a Wallop. Although it's a two cost attack, Wallop does damage and then gives you block based on how much damage you dealt. I love it with Talk to the Hands, and I love, love, love it with Divinity Runic Pyramid. Prostrate number three could be decent too, but not as decent as this Wallop. We've happened upon a group of what look like purple fire spirits. We may toss a card into the bonfire, gaining a reward based on the card that we lose. Give up a rare card here to gain 10 max health. Give up an uncommon card to get a full heal. Or just give up a starter card and laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. All the way to the bank. Bye bye Easy free removal every time. Alright, let's go to this shop so that I have the option to not go to the, sh the uh, fire. Yeah, let's do that. Shame we can't afford orange pellets here. Now that we have retain, a warship looks a lot more interesting. Instant five mantra to get us even more divine. And I'll be removing 
the last defend. Would we take another wheel kick at this point? I would think about another wheel kick. Now that we have Pyramid. I would definitely strongly consider it. I don't think we need this warship, although it's kind of nice. Could also buy a potion. I think I'll take none of the above. Feeling pretty confident with what we've got right now. What if you pray too hard and get double divinity? Now you actually have to leave divinity before you can enter it again. A little known rule of the gods. Oops, order there. Or was it? Let me tell you, you don't, you don't want to anger those gods. They are spiteful sons of a gun. Hmm. Spiker's a bit of a problem, actually. Speaking of spiteful, spiker. Spiteful. Hmm. Even worse. I'm gonna end up with too many attacks in my hands. Woe is me. Okay, well, Divinity Wallop next turn. Wallop gives you the block before you take the spike damage, I believe. Yes, okay. Inner Peace Blues. Not uses, but we never did find a mental fortress. I guess Sanctity does draw cards. That part's nice. I'm gonna keep skipping though. But yeah, if you if you gain ten mantra when you're already in divinity, you do not get to enter divinity again. Keep talk to the hand in flurry here. Full blocking, good. Thanks for coming back, Flurry of Blows. Could maybe consider crush joints, because we currently don't have access to vulnerable in this deck, and it would be really nice to be able to scale the damage of the wheel kick and the wallop, especially the wallop. And remove artifact layers. Yes. We'll take that. Alright, I think we keep going this way. We're actually just basically healing to full. There's nothing at us, nothing for us at a rest site other than the recall action, which we'll get one guaranteed anyway. So let us instead get ourselves into a boss fight and see how that goes. Giant head here will have a countdown followed by attacking us for many big numbers, but not that many big numbers. Goodbye next turn, that sounds grand. that in my hand, the flurry, as we shuffle the deck here. There we go. 
So here's the first big attack turn. We're divine again next turn. Let's just go... Vigilance. Empty body. Flurry, Sash Whip, Strike this turn. Divine next turn. We can play Crush Joints. And kill with Lesson Learns. Although I do it slightly wrong with the Ink Bottle. Now we have a Pantograph, healing at the start of boss fights. We're offered another Flurry of Blows Plus, although I might consider an Empty Mind here. Exiting Divinity Stance isn't exactly in my MO, you know? But it is card draw, and that alone is meritorious. Get in here. This enemy could give us a curse. They'll do so with a swirly mega debuff intent icon. The way I like to think of the Writhing Mass is an enemy that we have control over. Anytime we hit them, they're forced to change intents. So we shuffle their intents until we get one that we're capable of dealing with. That'll work just fine. While also dishing out some damage and getting cards cleared. Once that's happened, we're good. So that's the one that applies a curse permanently. That's the one we don't want. Perfect. Okay, we'll take only one. That's gotta be worth it. Weren't gonna do much better on that turn. We don't want to kill, but, and we don't want to reroll again, because with only one attack left, we cannot reroll it from a curse if the Writhing Mass rolls to a curse. So my usual advice for this fight, leave at least one unplayed attack in your hand. Like, sure, we can kill with this, but then I don't get to land the lesson learned. We could do more damage with Strike, but then there's a chance of getting cursed. Instead, we should just end the turn. Go to Vine again, and proceed from here. Get a fairy in a bottle. If we would die, heal to 30% health. And look at these options. Cut through fate. Deal damage. Scry. Draw a card. Or two more mantra cards. Worship or pray. You know, I like decks where pray is actually good. Pray is going to be four immediate mantra and uh, another card draw card added to the draw pile. Let's pick that up. Let's pick that up. I think the cut through fate's quite good too. But I like the pray. Einz Wide says, can I play, explain a little bit why card draw is still so important like the deck? Seems like my hand is often pretty full anyways with Pyramid. We don't get the full draw. The thing is, the more cards we draw, the more often we can enter Divinity Stance, and therefore the more energy we're going to gain, especially as we add a few more Mantra cards, the Prostrate and the Prey. The idea here is to both just radically increase the total number of cards we can play each turn by both drawing more and generating more energy. It's also a somewhat setup-oriented deck. We need these devotions and talk to the hands in play before we're really able to function, so we need to be able to make sure that we can get that to happen early in the fight. Or else, what's the point? A bonk, the one that's buffing, and then block with vigilance. Can do eruption and consecrate next turn if we want to. Yeah. Cycling through your whole deck in one turn is a good way to slay the Spire. I can attest to that. It just works. Alright, note that Lesson Learned won't work on the Darklings unless you're ending the fight with it. Let's just bonk here for block. Kill this fool. And then weaken you. Next turn we can smite. Um... We'll be divine as well. We can smite lesson learns and win. Play that just for the ink bottle. 
Omniscience. Choose a card in the draw pile, play it twice and exhaust it. Yes, yes, yes. Double Devotion or Double Talk to the Hand doesn't matter. Both are exceedingly good here. Still quite a few upgrades behind, but that's okay. We'll get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more upgrades very soon. How many more unupgraded cards do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, quite a few, actually. We're going to be behind still. Noted. We'll have to remove uh, another unupgraded card at the shop. Wish I could go a different way, but we have to go this way. Hey, that helps too. Upgrade two random skills. Well, now there's two fewer unupgraded cards in the deck. Would a purity ever be good in this deck? I think so. Yes, I think so. I think it could be quite good indeed. Behold. The power. No? Not enough power? Not enough power. Very well. Go Sash Whip Miracle Empty Body? Locking next turn is going to be a bit of a challenge. Wallop doesn't generate any block if the enemy has block. We have to do health damage. Omniscience Prostrate wouldn't get me into Divinity this turn. We only have three Mantra. I would have had to have played Prey last turn. Hmm. But I could Omniscience the Vigilance and block for a bunch. That's pretty reasonable. getting big heals soon anyway. You can see we've definitely got a bit of hand clog if we can't get the Divinity Engine online. That's a real problem for us. Also unable to generate meaningful block on this turn. Maybe some. Play that for the heal, and then set up the ink bottle. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I'll keep the current potions over at Dexterity Potion. Prey Plus, if we want another Prey. They're technically draw neutral. I'll take one more. That gives us some, some serious accelerant for the deck. And means we can potentially go Divine on turn one. Oh, and we get a Dolly's Mirror. There's also Master Reality with, with two Preys is actually kind of good, because upgraded Preys would be extra helpful. Hmm. There's also Divinity Potion. Ambrosia instantly puts us into Divinity Stance. Dolly's Mirror to duplicate... Anything in the deck, probably scroll. Actually, no, probably Omniscience. Duplicating Omniscience is the most powerful thing we can do. Huh. So let's start with that. <laughs> and I can still buy Master Reality and a card removal. Interesting. And I'll have enough money for a remove at the final shop, too. I think this Master Reality might be overkill. I like the extra draw it gives us from the insights of the prey, but note that because it costs us a draw up front, it's a bit iffy. Sure, it heals us, too, when we play it, but we have many other sources of healing. I agree. Very unnecessary. We've already got basically a, a perfect setup here with the uh, double omniscience now. 
It means we're more likely to draw Omniscience on turn one, and if we do, we can double more stuff. For example, behold, Omni targeting Omniscience. This lets us duplicate two cards in the draw pile. And if I want, I can get extra silly with that. Let's do double devotion, double talk to the hand. Which also heals us more, too. Don't actually want to be a bind until next turn. Thank you very much. So here we're now at uh, we're at eight mantra. So if I play prostrate, we overflow our mantra meaninglessly. However, if I play vigilance, leave divinity, exit calm. We can now re-enter divinity by playing the prostrate again. Double divinity. The power. More free upgrades. The whetstone will upgrade two random attacks. Strike and wheel kick at a minimum. Maybe talk to the hands. We're offered a tantrum again. With so much talking of hands, it could be okay here. Funny how the necessary upgrades all came together at the last minute here. War paint and whetstone. Now nah, we're fine. We got the lesson learned itself upgraded. I'll take it. No need for upgrades from potions now. We've got it covered. Just double all the devotions? Yeah, let's do it. More devotions than ever before. Twelve mantra per turn, please. You what? That's too much, you say? How dare you imply such a thing is even possible. Enjoy the bonking, sir. Now be gone. I don't think I should have done that. That's okay. Here we go. Pulp plus. Don't have any dexterity. Just take max health. Remember, we were once at 56 max health this run. We've now gained 16 max HP from the Singing Bowl, better than Mango would have been. Although it's certainly taken a while. You know what we're doing. I have 10 Mantra? What? Hmm. So what happens if I leave Divinity? Am I going to go back into Divinity immediately, or... How is this going to work? No, we're in Calm. And if I play the Prostrate... Alright, we go into Vine and I have three Mantra. Cool, I guess. This 
shame this is one off from a kill, otherwise we'd have perfect bag bottle stuff. Nirvana Blues. Oh, we don't need that either. Keep skipping cards. Become chunky. Become three keyed. And become ready to take on the first of our Act 3 bosses. We're here at full health. No turn one omniscience. Or is there? There's not. Unfortunate. So it looks like we'll be taking a little bit of damage in this fight. I definitely want to play this Devotion turn one. Let's also remove artifact layers from Donu here. And I'll Miracle talk to the hand, remove the last artifact, create room in hand. So we do take 14, but we can heal that up pretty easy. Remember, we've got a Pantograph coming up here. We can easily enter Divinity this turn, which will make Wallop a good block. Let's do that. I pray to go divine. Big bonks for Donu. Generally speaking, you'll see me target Donu first. Donu buffs the strength of both of these bosses, whereas Dekka adds annoying dazed to your deck. Each are threatening in their own manner. Um, but for me, it's usually Donu that's the more pressing threat. What am I going to do here? Double Devotion, double Vigilance? Sure. These aren't my attack cards. Just setting up Ink Bottle now. GG. Sir Artemiel says, what happens if you double omniscient something, but the second card you chose is drawn with ink bottle? Once you've selected your targets, they're removed from the draw pile, so that, that shouldn't be possible. Good question, though. There's definitely some weird things ink bottle can do with uh, an intended play of cards that I've seen. All right, pretty happy with blind turn one. What else is on top here? Wallop. Probably not going to be omniing the devotions here. This is still a fight where we play both, though. I don't imagine we'll have too much trouble with the awakened one overall. I'm not going to use the wall up this turn. I'm just going to set up this cultist for death. To death, you say. Block like that. Hmm, but then you had to go and make it difficult. Awakened one. I'd really like to go to Vine this turn. Let's start with Vigilance, Consecrate, see what we draw. We can consider Master of Strategy. If I can draw Prostrate... No, Prostrate's in the discard pile. If I can draw the other Prey, I can go Divine. But I can't play them both, huh? I'd have to do Empty Mind, then. 
or empty body, pray pray. Let's cool with that. Just the other tuck to the hands, huh? Well, I suppose that's fine. Take a bit here. Could have killed that bird to save a few hit points, I suppose, as well. But now there's no need. He upgrades a strike. Not much for omniscience to do at this point. I suppose I'm okay with that. Let's just play both of these. And... Kill you. Easy peasy. But I like to double an attack card of some kind. Let's lose that strike. Act 4 is coming up, so we'd really like Ink Bottle to be set up for the Elite's fight. It's going to be really important, actually. Let's make sure we do that successfully. Oh, right. It's only the first part of the fight. Fine, too. All right, well, we have to remember to make, end with this on 9 for Phase 2 here. Shouldn't be too hard. Behold the damages. Oh, not quite. Shoot. Empty mines. Flurry. Carve. Concentrate. There we go. All right. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be followed throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this mantra working out so beautifully? Really wonderful to think that this run started with a transform two, giving us one of our two devotions. We kind of just. Locked into all the other sources of Mantra from there. This has been a truly delightful run. And look at that. The last fire upgrades the last card, meaning we can remove Lesson Learned at this shop if we desire. There's also a Mental Fortress and a Fear No Evil, both pretty useful cards. I think Mental Fortress especially will be a huge amount of block for us and is a really good upgrade from the elites going into the heart fight. Doubled, uh, doubled mental fortress from the omniscience, especially. Really like our current potions. A dupe pot on omniscience is really, really good. Remember when we had upgrade debt? Pepperidge Farm remembers. But now we just have omnisciences. Let's take this mental fortress. Let's remove the last strike. I still have a hundred bucks. So I could buy the fear no evil, but if I buy the fear no evil, I might not get to upgrade the fortress. So I'll add no further cards. Perfection. Let's see, I only have three energy. Ooh, that'd be super worth it. 
Omni Pray and Devotion is an option. I think we have a better option though. What about Omni Pray and Consecrate? We can just go divine right now with Omniscience Pray, thanks to Prostrate in my hand. By Omni Consecrate, we also deal 27 to all of them, to both of them twice, which is going to make it really easy to kill at least one of them here. And we have Scrawl at the end of the turn. I like it. The other option I see is Omni Both Praise, curiously enough. Go to 17 Mantra. That way we enter Divinity right now, and Prostrate puts us into Divinity at my whim next turn also. But we get less to do with the, with the Mantra this turn. Although I could maybe make a bigger turn one happen with that. You know what? I really like that line. So I'm going to Omni both. Oh yeah, and I've got a Master Strategy in my hand too. Let's go Omni both praise. That's not prey. What? Hmm. Seems like I clicked on the wrong card there. Okay, that's still fine, as we still get to go Divine this turn. I did click on the Pray, didn't I? I chat says I absolutely clicked on the right card. Interesting. Maybe that was uh Ink Bottle. Either way, I'm gonna play that out. I'm I'm fine with that. I don't think it's gonna change how this fight goes. Hundred percent a glitch. Cool. Well, now you all know. Don't make that mistake. Exactly what happened is a still a little unclear. However, I'm gonna kill the shield here. Let's get rid of that problem entirely. Can't draw it. Burns if my hand is full. Get screwed. Vigilance. Yeah, we actually we can't draw Lesson Learn because uh, Lesson Learn was destroyed by the bug. That's fine. We know Insight draws two burns. What? Vigilance, Empty Body, Wallop? That seems pretty reasonable. Oh, and we get to Flurry? Even better. Although that will draw us a burn. Sash Whip's also really good here. Turn that down to 28 damage. Care what the ink bottle's on for heart? I guess a little bit. Eighty-one max off. That's a very generous amount. We want some mon more energy. We can take a tranquility plus here. It's actually kind of reasonable with the praise and such. I'll take that. All right, 28 cards, 81 max health, a duplication potion, and a fairy bo in a bottle going into the heart fight here. I think our odds are pretty dang good. Alas, there is not any omniscience in our hand here, but we can change that maybe with Empty Mind. Yeah, there's one. So if I play Miracle, we can Omni two cards to be played twice. Extremely tempting to just quad talk to the hand for 12 block per card, but I think we probably want to split the difference and do double devotion, double talk to the hand. Oh wait, um, actually, no, this is where the duplication potion comes in. We use the duplication potion on the, on, on the omniscience and we get the best of three worlds. 
which is all the talk of the hand and the double devotion. We'll take some beat of death damage, but that's fine. Might have been the insights getting shuffled in that messed up the second omniscience too. Oh man. That's such a funny glitch. Is it three or four cards? If we duplicate omniscience, we'll get three cards. Um, because one of the dupes will be used to dupe an omniscience. So we essentially play omniscience three times. So the first one will target Talk to the Hand, then Omniscience. That way we block the Beat of Death a little bit. And now we're tubbling this and this. That's way we ended the turn at full health. So we go Divine next turn with Prostrate. We have Wallop in hand. This is already set up to be amazing. Let's just play this so we have even more energy next turn. Sixty-seven, you say? Well, about that. Let's get a bunch of stance changes in here, too. The Bunkener. And put this in play, too. All right, looking pretty one-sided here. Wait, I'm not divine enough, though. Let's do that again. More divining. Gotta kill you with that. The vulnerable up. No artifact shall stop me. Fifty-eight block wallop. Damage capped. Back to divinity again next turn. Nothing can stop me now. Still back to divinity next turn. Bonk. Well, that was a filthy heart fight indeed. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.